I think that the game forgets... I think that the game forgets that it's a year and a half into the apocalypse. Like, people are becoming cannibals. No shit. We should, in George Romero's dead films, it goes night, it goes dawn. Dawn is literally two weeks later or less, and shit has hit the fan. Society is starting to crumble quickly. Day. You are probably experiencing some of the last human beings ever. Dr. Logan says that they now outnumber us 400,000 to 1. There's 12 people in a bunker in a haphazard scientific operation and the government gave uh, some military over to protect the scientists during their mission. And that's it. And that's four months in. And that's pretty realistic. If you read the Tom Clancy book on The Division, it's really interesting because he gets into like collapses and how diseases can cause societal collapse and stuff. Romero was super accurate in how the CDC and FEMA predict it would happen. This game is a year and a half in, so there's a new normal. I like that. The disease has exhausted itself. We're at a new normal, but yet the situations are still largely identical to the first one. The only thing that shows that we are a year and a half in is the, the, the open world maps. They did those well because they look like this is pretty late into... Look at the scale of that hand. That hand is as big as my fucking body. It's as big as the gun. What? I don't think we quite got that right. Anyways, maybe they are tired of telling the same stories after a few years into the end of the world. <sighs> I like that, Freak, but that means they should tell new stories. Like, how did you manage... What I would like to hear, Freak, is how did they manage to make it a year and a half in? How did you manage to live? How are you still holding out this late into it? But they don't do that. Instead, they tell even more generic stories than the first one. Like, you're still talking about your wife? We're almost two years in. I mean, I'm sorry you lost her, but you're going to have to give me more. Now, I know it's an indie. I know it's an indie. But this game did take... How does that zombie hit me through the fence? I don't disagree with you, Freak, but, like, they, they do that story about cannibals. Which is cool. Those enclaves, those those radiant enclave quests that, like, pop up. That are like... Hey, can you go get us another recruit? I'm cool with those. Those are sick. Those are sick. And as a State of Decay fan, someone who loved the first one, it's really exciting to have something new to do. I think they did a good job there. But when it comes to, like, the random survivors and the way that they're talking over the radio, I just think that we're, we would be deep enough in that it would be a fairly normal thing that some people would become cannibalistic or fucking crazy or monstrous. We're supposed to be after the disease has exhausted itself. We're still talking about the most lethal virus you could imagine. But at the same time, I think The Division did a really good job. I think The Division has done the best job. I know they didn't have the budget of The Division. This is my- this is what I would love to see. You combine State of Decay and The Division. If you could do that... State of Decay and The Division, but keep the combat of State of Decay. I don't want bullet sponges, I don't want... You know, stat crunching out the ass, because... The Zed ultimately die via headshot, because... It's... Night of the Living Dead. That's how you kill a zombie. You have to destroy the brain or sever the spine. But if I could get the world of the division, if I could get the survival elements of Seven Days to Die and, and the division survival, if I could get that world that they nailed really well. Red talent is not your friend. They aren't interested in saving us. Making more powerful. I don't mind this. This overarching story we've been getting. Like that the network and Red Talon are on the verge of fighting one another. That's cool. That's interesting. And I like that they come in over the radio. You know, hearts and minds. They're trying to control the propaganda. Both sides of it are. That's working well. There's there's things in here that are working well. It's just it's just little things. I still am a fan. There's just little things that you got they gotta tune. 
that and some of them are going to be hard to tune. It's going to be hard. You're not going to rewrite. They're never going to rewrite the dialogue to these terrible recruit stories. I can still taste those nachos. My wife and I met at a pub. My mom and I used to go to movies. It was fun. This matters how? Anyways. Uh, this sh uh, unacceptable. I looked back as soon as you blasted the zombies through a privacy fence. Yeah, it's the, uh... The hit detection ain't great. There's quite a bit of clipping, quite a bit of camera jar. I'm gonna go herbalism. Because why not? He's already upgraded his computers. I can't remember what... No, it's not her, it's Grace. Grace is the computer expert. Alright, she went electronics. We'll make him go... Programming. Sorry, but yet another Asian guy is a master at programming. Why? Come on, Undead Labs. You're supposed to be progressive. Lost wife, negative... There was a time when life was worth living. Somehow, I keep going. You could have told that story! I would have liked to have heard that story. This guy needs to be leveled, though, for real. Because he's got some natural powerhouse features that I think are going to start to pick way well. What it seems to be happening is that there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that, like first the first state of decay, they don't let you in on. There's a lot of math going on behind the scenes with how your community and survivors organize themselves that you don't get to see. They, they let you in on a lot more of it. I mean, we can dig into it. But there's other things that I think with these survivors, like Grace. Grace having unlimited stamina has got to be something within her traits that we can't read. Uh, narrative... Yeah, I... A narrative this game is not, exactly. You totally just gotta create your own fun and enjoy the sandbox. You take it for what it is. It's it's a $30 indie title and you take it for what it is, but... As a fan of the first one, I know that there's things that they did really well in the first one. That the And the second one does a lot of things really well. It is a bigger and better game, ultimately. And if I, you could combine these things and flesh it out... Then they've got something special. Uh, if you could, they would fuck it up, too. They would- what, fuck up the new dialogue, freak? Oh shit, cameras, did they fix the ultra wonky car camera? Uh, yeah, they did. It was a 20 gigabyte patch. I don't know why the hell the patch had to be as massive as it is, but, yeah. Where's the inspiration? I don't even see words of inspiration. Alright, what are our missions currently? All combining the game. Yeah, 20 gigabytes. Literally as big as the first game. As the game, total game download. I think they hard code a lot. They hard code a lot. It's like, it's written in if statements. As I said on stream, it's like when I used to script out Flash games. You know, a very, very, a very particular set of circumstances are created to make the illusion that it is all working well and smoothly, but it's all actually hung together with duct tape and rubber bands and band-aids. Which probably happens a lot, but I'm you know, nearly positive that whatever's going on at Epic, they've got C++ experts and it's class-oriented. Obviously they make their, the Unreal Engine is made in-house. They have some of the they have some of the best minds in the business over at Epic Games, or you want it, they want to make the engine that they make and those people are programming a game on the engine that they make that most of the industry works with in-house you know the, the the people they have employed there it's got to be unreal there's no better situation it's like having a heart attack in a hospital they made their game on unreal engine 4 but I they don't have the budget of epic so how are they gonna pull that talent. There's super smart, talented people that work on Undead Labs. I have to reiterate, this is not a Destiny 2 situation. 
it's not a situation of shitting on the game. It's a, it's a situation where I really enjoy the game. I'm a fan of both Undead Labs, of the game, of the franchise. But, you know, it's... They have limitations as an indie. They can't pull over the guy who worked on... Literally, if there's a technical issue with Fortnite, they can say, hey, why don't you just bring in the guy who made the engine? He's in the cubicle right across from you. But if Undead Labs has a big technical issue, like save Nicholas from the Blood Plague zombie, but Blood Plague's already gone. So they need to script an and if statement. If X, then Y. But if this, then... I mean, you're probably talking hundreds of thousands of lines of code in here. In a small team. You know they would combine all the wrong parts. You just need to be a dev. I mean, I don't know. Freak, you played both. You started following in here when we were playing the first State of Decay. I know you've been playing the second State of Decay quite a bit. Do you have... Is there any one big thing that you feel like should come over from the first game? Because I still believe this is a bigger and better game. That it is a 2.0, a true sequel. There's just been some things cut away... That ultimately, I think, made the game better. And as I've said, it's really just one big thing. Uh, it must be... It must have been remapping the ground detection for the entire game. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I just think that... Instead of needing to write, like, a class, like saying... The vehicle classes operate in such a way, they've probably gone, like, so when I would make a Flash game, literally, everything is in one, one thing. The entire game loads on one page, but when you do class-oriented programming, you would basically put it in folders. Like, we have the car class, and we have the, the human class, and we have the zombie class, and you, you keep all the coding separate, and you run them separately, and then if there's an issue, you just look at those issues separately. But when you write the whole game together in a non-object-oriented, class-oriented way, which I have to assume they probably did it the most technically advanced way because it's a fucking 2018 game studio, but... You know, if they didn't, that's what would lead to a 20 gigabyte patch, is they literally have to go in to the, to the game code that exists and they've got to just like fucking try to crank it out. Like, oh shit, here's this and this and this. But I'm such a a noob on that shit. They've got guys that got probably masters in computer sciences and beyond and But it just can play like that sometimes, especially after the patch. Like that they probably had someone like me, a scripter, get in there and just try to fucking hard fix it cuz that's how you would do it. It's like you got a leaking uh, you know, tub. Well, you can either just tape it up with duct tape, or you can actually get a whole brand new tub and, you know, redo the grouting and really fix the interior plumbing issues, or you can just duct tape it. Bungie is the master of duct tape. Bungie is not going to do what Epic does and rewrite the game code. They're gonna fucking try to find the easiest fix. Oh, I see that the last word has randomly procs 200 damage. Okay, uh, here's how we'll do it. We'll nerf the last word so that it only procs 100 damage. The massive critical still occurs. They never fix that because that's a much more technically complicated issue. But, so, we'll just slap on the duct tape fix. Just cut the numbers by half. It must have been a uh, remap in... As a viewer, I'd enjoy this game for a bit, I am sure. Yeah, I think you would like this game quite a bit. Uh, of the bungee body slam. <laughs> With a slap in the easiest fix possible on. And then if when you do that, just claim that, well, we were worried it would break. You have to throw some adjective salad in there. We were worried that it would break the core universe of the simulation if we interfered with the global math. Sounds okay. Yeah, sure, put it on the press release. That's yeah, just a bunch of gibberish. As Captain Rhodes said, I come in here asking for progress, and you give me a bunch of Greek salad. I've lost men. We're running out of ammunition. But, you know, we know better. 
Hey, Stuck, think about this. What if they did reach out to their fanbase before, or they decided the changes you weren't happy they made survey from other gamers? Well, Freak, it's a good idea. It's worked in the past. But the weird thing is, Freak, they went and got rid of their forums. Before this game release, they, they, uh, they went through four community managers and they got rid of their forums, and I don't know why. I still, you know, ultimately trust the company. As I said, a really small company. I have to assume Microsoft was involved, and you know, the legal shit on that, on this stuff is like really hardcore. Those NDAs are like bulletproof. It's almost a month later and I'm still playing it every day. Right, yeah, there's there's things to love here. The sandbox is, is great. Dude, I played the first State of Decay, which was more buggy than this game. Every day for like a year. I, like I said, I got to 29th in the world. I loved this game. I loved pretending I was in one of Romero's movies and like getting to live that Walking Dead sort of fantasy. How would you do it? It was ahead of its time because you really couldn't do that in Minecraft. Minecraft is, is its own thing. And Seven Days to Die didn't exist and Fallout 4 didn't exist and Dying Light didn't exist. But that's something that is also a struggle for, seven, for State of Decay 2 is Dying Light is very immersive. And lies. Seven Days to Die ultimately gives you more options when it comes to how you're gonna build a base. But I think one thing that State of Decay does really well is that realism. Scouting out locations. Getting to be in a, in a world that really feels apocalyptic. This is small town USA and it's abandoned. I think we've consistently said that, that the open world is really good. And feeling like a survivor in this world is really good. There's things to like, no doubt about it, man. No doubt about it. <clears throat> Just little things, little things. Rip. <laughs> 